super active uh, discussion platform of the uh, University of Groningen. My name is Tamara Slief and I'm talking today with uh, Katrine Schepma. She's a professor of sustainability and environment uh, at the University of uh, Groningen. We're talking today about biofuels. Um, first of all, uh, you said before, cheap oil is running out and uh, we need other uh, alternative resources. Um, biofuels have been uh, in the news lately uh, a lot. Uh, saying people saying that biofuels cause uh, a food crisis. Can you first explain what biofuels and why they are uh, exp uh, why they are uh, causing a food crisis? Yes, well, to a certain extent, biofuels are produced um, in developing countries on land that used to be used for growing crops for food. So there is, uh, as all markets are connected, as we learn in economics. There's an obvious link then uh, if you either uh, produce biomass for energy purposes or produce biomass for food purposes. If you switch towards energy, then obviously it has an impact on the, on the food market. So what we actually see in developing countries is uh, strongly, well, we see it worldwide actually, is a strongly rising uh, food prices. And some people argue that to a certain extent this can be attributed to the fact that we now increasingly uh, are using biomass for uh, energy purposes, uh, particularly for the adding it to our uh, petrol that we uh, use in our cars. So what, we, what should we do then if they are causing uh, yeah, well this th problem? Th there are, I think there are a number of uh, say solutions. One is the certification suggestion that it says that if, if there's clear evidence that uh, a biofuel uh, is crowding out food production and therefore um, uh, driving up the food prices in vulnerable regions, developing regions, um, then, that you then you should not uh, support that. In other words, a certification system should be developed to check on that particular uh, externality. Um, uh, and, and in fact, uh, the European Commission is preparing for such a uh, certification uh, development. Secondly, um, there's a lot of talk about the second generation biofuels. Uh, and basically, that then the biomass used for food production is it's not really interfering with the food market itself. What, what's the second generation? Well, you can think of wood chips, for instance, um, uh, or you can think of waste. Uh, um, uh, any, anywhere you have this biomass that is just not used at all, uh, which is now dumped and has no alternative use except from um, using it for biofuels. So there's a lot of biomass that is not at all uh, interfering with the food production. Uh, and again, so focusing the, on biofuels that biofuels can be sustainable. Yes, exactly. So switching to what we call this Second generation biomass already uh, helps also, I think, in this regard. A third solution could be, uh, and at least in my perspective, to be uh, less precise in terms of the targets. Um, for instance, the European Commission has for 2010 the uh, target that 5.75% of the uh, diesel uh, should be based on, on, on biofuel, should, should be based on a, on a biofuel. Now it's 2%. That sounds good. Like well, it sounds good and it sounds very precise, but uh, it also enables the traders and speculators to anticipate on that. So it also opens the door for, I think, undue speculation and, in fact, may lead to uh, price rises that otherwise would not have been taken place. So a bit more relaxed uh, and not so precise targets, uh, which m maybe also are left to the individual member states of the European Union, th I think it would be a, a wiser policy than the precise targets uh, which are now prescribed by the system. So that could, to a certain extent, also um, uh, add, add a solution to this. And maybe finally a solution could be that we are gradually thinking about um, other fuels. Um, and alternative fuels uh, in, in our mobility uh, system. In, 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 uh, and, and what I'm thinking of myself is natural gas uh, and potentially also biogas or biomass gas. Um, because and why is that? Well, if we introduce gas much more substantially in our mobility, now it's just a few percentages, but if, if it would go in the direction of 10, 20 percent, and there are a lot of developments outside Europe into that direction, not only we make a contribution to local air pollution, because gas is clearly cleaner than uh, the alternatives, uh, but also we make ourselves less dependent from the oil producing countries. So in terms of security of supply, it's probably a good thing to do. Uh, it leads to less uh, carbon dioxide emissions, so it makes a contribution to the, uh, to the greenhouse problem. And also it reduces the substantial strain which is now on the oil market. We need so much oil because there's oil needed for mobility. And mobility is completely, almost completely oil driven. So if we can switch mobility 
a bit more towards other fuels, uh, we put off the pressure, take some pressure away uh, on the oil market, and we know that the pressure nowadays drives oil prices up at very high levels, and, and, and the slipstream of that drives up energy prices a lot. But is there enough gas? Isn't that the same problem with oil? Yeah, on the long term, it's the same problem, but the, but the perspective is that the, the gas reserves are um, at least enough, given the projections, for between 15 and 100 years, whereas for oil, it's between some decades and maybe max 50 years. In other words, there's much more gas available than oil. And of course, you can also use biomass to um, generate gas, uh, basically with a much less energy losses. How do you get, generate biomass? Of uh, well, the, biomass? The, the biomass, you just, you, you, it's the trees or whatever, um, uh, and you can, there are all kind of techniques uh, that, uh, developed nowadays to gasify biomass. So you get basically green gas that can have precisely the same qualities as natural gas. So you, can, you would not see the, the difference, except from the fact that, that it's based on biomass. And it's a green gas, therefore CO2 neutral. And that, introducing that in mobility, also could be a great breakthrough. So that could be a fourth contribution to this dilemma that we're facing now. So actually, to sum up, there are uh, solutions to uh, solve the problem uh uh, the oil yes. crisis yeah. uh, problem. Well, yeah, I, I think that the, the, the discussion about the biofuels can be alleviated by the uh, measures that I, I have just mentioned. Um, one is to um, look at the certification system, at the second generation biomass, but also look at the alternative uh, fuels such as natural gas and biogas and mobility. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, if you want to uh, react on uh, this uh, statement, you can go to our website and uh, give your opinion.